centipede bread and rigatoni eyeball pasta. Hello everyone, starting off with the centipede bread. In that bowl is two and a half cups of all-purpose flour. To this you will add one tablespoon of sugar, one envelope or two and a quarter teaspoons of instant active dry yeast, a quarter teaspoon of salt. Give that a stir till it's nicely combined. Then add in one egg that's at room temperature, two tablespoons of olive oil or any other vegetable oil, and one cup of milk that's been warm so that it's very warm to the touch. I put mine in the microwave for about 45 seconds. And then beat this together on high until it's nicely combined and it's going to be a super sticky dough and that's okay. Then I switch to a dough hook. Now at this point I'm adding in an additional about a quarter cup of flour. I'm putting it around the edges just so that the the bread dough comes together. Now you don't have to use a mixer for this. You can do this on the countertop. You just have to knead it with your hands about 50 times. Knead in an additional a quarter cup of flour till it's nice and smooth, just a little bit sticky and elastic. But the dough hook works amazing if you have a, a stand mixer. I just love using a stand mixer for this. So I'm just gonna continue to knead this with my stand mixer. And as you'll see, it'll become very kind of stretchy and it's still a little bit sticky, but not super duper sticky. I'm gonna bring this together into a bowl, add a little bit of flour around the edges of it, cover it. And what's the best part of this recipe is that all you have to do is let this set for 10 minutes. You don't have to let it rise until doubled. Just 10 minute rest, plastic wrap, put it somewhere warm and leave it be. After 10 minutes, you're gonna turn this out onto a cookie sheet with a silicone mat. Now, if you're making plain old white bread, just put this into a loaf pan, let it rise until double and then bake it. But in this case, because we're doing a centipede, I'm gonna form it into a centipede shape. And how that looks is completely up to you. I just kind of wanted a little kind of a squiggle in there. So I just kept kind of moving it around until I got something I liked. Then I pressed in two black olive slices for the eyes. I just pressed them in so that they stuck and they stayed in there through the whole baking process so you don't have to really do anything to get them to stick. Just press them in nicely. I covered this with a plastic wrap that's been greased and you're going to set it somewhere to rise for about an hour or so until it's doubled in volume. And here it is. Now I realized once it was doubled that this was probably too big. I should have cut this centipede into two different centipedes and I would have had a thinner one. I just had a really, really fluffy one because this will actually get bigger as it bakes. And there it is out of the oven. It's at 350 for about 25 minutes until it's golden brown. Take it out of the oven and then just use some chow mein noodles and just stick them in to make legs and antenna. And you can put as many or as few as you like. And then it's ready to go. Now for the rigatoni eyeballs. That's one pound of rigatoni pasta that I've cooked according to package directions and I actually cooked it a little bit too long. I lost track of time a bit. So they actually started falling apart, which kind of was a problem a little bit later as you'll see. So cook them so they're al dente. Then I added about a quarter cup or so of olive oil, maybe a little bit less, just to coat each piece of pasta so they don't all stick together like crazy. In this measuring cup is about one can or a, a large size jar of pasta sauce I'm mixing in a half a cup of Parmesan cheese. Here is the pasta. I'm also gonna add another half a cup of shredded Parmesan cheese to the pasta and I'm gonna gently toss it around. Then you'll need a pan for this, a spring form pan that you can remove the sides on. This is a nine inch pan. I've sprayed this with cooking spray. Then I'm gonna add a sheet of aluminum foil on the bottom. And this is to catch any pasta sauce that might leak out the bottom and make a big mess in your oven. Then you'll take your pan, you're gonna tilt it on its side a little bit, and you're gonna start layering those rigatoni noodles. And as we go here, you'll see there are some whole ones, but there's a lot of them that broke and they're kind of flattened. And you want them to be 
hole because you want nice big holes so you'll be able to pour pasta sauce down into them. But I had a lot of flattened ones and a lot of broken ones. So learn by my mistake and make sure that you're very gentle with your rigatoni noodles when you're cooking them. Then you'll take that pasta sauce and pour it over top, trying to fill up all those little holes. Now recommendation here is use about almost twice as much as I used. I did not use enough pasta sauce. Uh, my pasta ended up a little on the dry side. So I'm gonna say use about a can and a half of pasta sauce approximately over top of the pasta. And you're gonna give it a little tap, tap, tap. As you can see, it sunk down. Now at this point, I should have added more sauce on top to just put to cover up the top of it, and I didn't. Then you're gonna put this in the oven at 350 degrees for about 20 minutes or so. Take it out, add some mozzarella cheese on top, about a cup's worth. Put it back in the oven for another 10, 15 minutes until that cheese is nicely melted and starts to bubble a little bit. Well, that's baking. You can make your eyeball shapes. I decided to use these Bocconcini medallion slices. I thought they'd be the perfect size, but turns out they weren't. They're big. So I ended up taking these and using a cookie cutter to cut out little eyeball shapes. You can do this with just slices of mozzarella, or you could just use the cocktail size, the little Bocconcini balls, the little tiny ones. That probably would have been perfect. So there's the rigatoni out of the oven. See how the cheese is nicely melted. We're gonna add those white circles all over the place. Put this back in the oven just for five minutes or so until they start to soften up. You don't want them to melt completely, just soften, because at this point we're going to press in these little olive slices. Press them in and you can see the cheese is a bit melted, so it allows it to sink in. And then for further decoration, I added little bits of red pepper in the center for eyeballs, but you could also add a little bit of green olive if you wanted, a little yellow pepper, all different color eyes if you want, or just those pimentos that you find in the center of green olives. And here's the centipede, all done, really cute. You could also add maybe red for that eye as well. And here is my rigatoni out of the pan. And here is a slice of it. As you can see, it's a little on the dry side. I ended up serving this with a little marinara on the side to add to it. If you're looking for more main course or appetizer Halloween savory goodies, look no further than this playlist. Thank you so much for watching.